Gallagher Power Fence. For more than 60 years, that name has stood for absolute quality in all areas of electric fencing. Our power fence systems have always been designed to combine top-of-the-line safety with pitch-perfect performance. Naturally, as a result of new developments in technology, Gallagher has developed systems that will prove to be even safer and more visible to your horse in the years to come. In addition to that, they will be more reliable and more durable for you to maintain. In this video, we will provide you with all the step-by-step -step instruction that you need to install your brand new equine electric fencing system. The three types of fencing that will be explained in this video are Equifence, Equibraid, and one and a half inch tape. But first, before we get started on these types of fencing, let's take a look at the basics of fence construction since you'll need to know how to do that first. H braces are the most important structural element of your fencing system. They are quite literally the cornerstone. For this reason, it is extremely important to build them correctly. Common sense tells us that more tension is placed on the corners than anywhere else in the fence. Let's take a look at the how-tos of building an H-brace. Step 1. We begin with one 6-inch in diameter, 8-foot tall post. This is the end post. And one 5-inch in diameter, 8-foot tall post. This is the brace post. A minimum of 3 feet of post should be buried leaving five feet above ground. The brace rail, which we will be installing, is laying on the ground in the middle. We then mark the post for the insulator locations at 48 inches, 36 inches, and 24 inches. These markings should, of course, face the inside of the fence. We then mark the post for the rail or horizontal brace post location at 42 inches, halfway between the top two wires. Another end post has been driven at the opposing end of the fence line. A tight string line has been run 24 inches off the ground. This line allows for post alignment as other posts are installed along the fence line. As you can see, in this case, posts have already been installed. Now mark the brace post for your insulators at 24 inches, 36 inches, and 48 inches. And mark the brace post at 42 inches for the brace rail as before. Now we're ready to measure the horizontal distance between the corner post and the brace post. Take that measurement and transfer it to your horizontal brace rail. If necessary, trim to fit with a chainsaw. In this case, our measurement is 10 feet and the post is 10 feet. Next, on the end post end of the brace rail, drill a hole 2 inches deep in the center of the post. The hole should be made 2 inches deep on the corner post and bore completely through the brace post. The next step requires a 12 inch long pin 3 8 inches in diameter that has been cut into two pieces, one at 4 inches, the other at 8 inches. Insert the 4 inch long piece into the hole in the end post. Hammer the 8 inch piece of the pin into the hole on the brace post so that the pin will face the corner post. Carefully place one end of the horizontal brace rail over the end of the protruding pin. Then lift the rail until the horizontal brace lines up with the pin on the brace post. Pound the pin into the horizontal rail until about one inch protrudes. As a side note, the brace rail's length needs to be two and a half times the height of the fence. This is how we arrive at the desired length of 10 feet. Using this equation will contribute great strength to the end assembly. Now we will move on to the next major step in the construction of the H brace. First, place a fence staple at the bottom of the corner post, just above the ground. Make sure that the staple's ends run in a vertical fashion. With at least 50 feet of 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire, thread one end through the staple. This wire will form what is known as a twitch wire. Its purpose is to tension the brace and provide strength to the finished brace to overcome and balance the pressure of the fence wires pulling on it. We run the twitch wire around the brace post and just above the protruding end of the pin. Repeat this process once more and you should end up with both ends of the wire running through the staple exiting on opposite sides. 
Pull on the twitch wire with a pair of Gallagher fence pliers to remove the slack. Once the slack is removed, grasp one end of the wire with the pliers and fold it over the staple so that the wire rests alongside itself. Repeat this action with the other end of the wire. Drive another staple over each pair of wires, fastening them securely to the post. Next, open up two joint clamps. Grasp all four of the wires running between the posts and place both clamps near the center of the wire. Snug up the joint clamps just finger tight. Finally, using a hammer, drive each of the clamps towards their respective posts. When all of the slack has been removed and the twitch wire is under tension, use a pair of pliers to fully tighten the nuts on each end of the clamps. This effectively completes construction of the H-brace assembly. Now we will take a look at the basics of the electric portion of your Gallagher fence system. In this section, we will be outlining the steps necessary to install your energizer box. Here is an example of the kind of housing structure that you may use to protect your energizer from the weather. In other words, this is where we will mount the energizer box. It may either be a barn with a convenient AC power source or a separate structure that you build yourself. Today we will be using this shed. This is an MH3 energizer. This is just one of many energizer models that Gallagher manufactures. Naturally, different fencing systems have different requirements based on acreage, location, and power source. Check with your dealer if you need help determining which type of energizer meets your needs. Now remove the energizer from the box. Remove the two energizer mounting screws from the box. Pick the energizer's intended mounting location and mark the location for the mounting screws. Your Gallagher energizer should come with a template in the manual for marking. With a hammer, tap in your screws. With a screwdriver, screw the screws in until a sufficient length protrudes from the surface, enough to hang the energizer on. Next, hang the energizer on the wall, ensuring that its placement is snug and secure. Now, using double insulated cable, plan the path your wire will take to reach the connection point on the fence. Today, we are using conduit. At the appropriate exit point, run the wire from the energizer through the conduit. In some cases, if there is a wall, you may need to drill a hole to allow the wire to pass and out to the connection point on the fence. You will want to install a lightning diverter. Take your lightning diverter and remove the mounting screws from the back. Place the lightning diverter to the post and remove the face plate. Now, drill the screws into the post in order to mount the lightning diverter. Using a pair of wire strippers, cut a 2 to 3 inch segment of insulation. Now, using a knife, strip the 2 to 3 inch segment of insulation off. Unscrew the nut and remove one of the washers. Place the bent exposed piece of wire around the connection point. Place the washer back on and tighten the nut down. You have just installed your lightning diverter. Cut the wire to length allowing extra at the ends to make necessary connection. Using staples, fasten the wire down at strategic locations to keep it from moving or being pulled from the energizer connection. At the connection point at the end, take a joint clamp and open it. Using a sharp knife or wire stripping tool, carefully cut the insulation so that approximately an inch of the insulation can be removed. Please note that you should never cut or nick the wire inside. This can cause the possibility of a future break in the wire. Place the end of the wire in the clamp next to the fence conductor. Then tighten the thumb screw on the L-shaped clamp. Repeat the process of removing the insulation at the other end of the wire. Loosen the red knob on the energizer sufficiently to allow the end of the wire to be installed. Place the wire in the slot under the knob and tighten the knob snugly. It is now important to ground your energizer. Select an appropriate site for the ground field with three locations for ground rods, each 10 feet apart. 
Stand a ground rod upright at the first sight, then drop a T-post driver over the top of the rod. Drive the rod until only two to three inches protrudes from the ground. Repeat this process with each of the other ground rods, remembering to space them 10 feet apart. Next, straighten out the heavy-duty underground cable. At the ground rod farthest from the energizer, cut to length and strip the insulated cable as before. Then bend the wire into a 2 to 3 inch right angle. Place an opened ground rod clamp over the ground rod. Slip the bent end of the wire under the clamp at the interior apex of the clamp opposite the bolt. Tighten the bolt firmly with a 9 16 inch wrench. Run the ground wire to the next rod. Repeat the process slipping a ground rod clamp over the rod, arranging the wire as before, and tightening the clamp. Do this once more with the final ground rod. Now connect a separate cable to the middle ground rod. Hook up the ground wire to the lightning diverter. This is what the completed ground system should look like. Be sure to leave enough slack to bury your cable 2-3 to three inches in the ground. Run the ground wire to the energizer location. Measure the wire and cut off the excess. Then loosen the green knob, place the end in the slot, and tighten the knob. Fasten the wire as needed to prevent it from being pulled out of the energizer. Now roughly estimate the amount of double insulated cable needed to connect all of the strands of fence. As previously done, remove an inch long segment of insulation from one end of the cable. As you can see, this has already been done here. Using a joint clamp, attach the cable to the bottom fence wire near the insulator. Now arrange the cable so that it runs up the post to the next wire. Using a joint clamp, attach the cable to the next fence wire near the insulator and so forth all the way up to each wire. Just continue to cut additional segments of insulated cable to enable connections between the remaining fence conductors, connecting them with joint clamps. Make sure all the joint clamps are tight. Repeat the process of connecting your circuit at the other end of the fence and you will have your completed circuit. Now set your lightning diverter. To do this, turn your energizer on. Plug the energizer into any standard 110 volt socket. You will know that the charger is pulsing based on the upper right hand corner of the charger. Turn the screw in the diverter counterclockwise until you hear it arcing. Once you hear an arc, back it off until it stops. If you are in a very dry area, you will want to hook your fence and ground system up to be a hot ground system. Please consult the Gallagher Power Fence Manual to see how this is done. In the next section, we will begin discussing how to construct the different types of Gallagher equine fencing. In this section, we will be explaining the process of installing a brand new Equifence system. We've already outlined the steps necessary to construct an H-brace properly. If you aren't familiar with this process and haven't watched that section yet, please reference this. First, we will be using a pre-made end-strain insulated strainer to tighten this end of the fence. This is also known as the Equifence Termination Kit. Mark the Equifence Termination Kit locations. Now find the uppermost marked location on the end post. Take the Equifence Termination Kit cable around the post and slide the tightener end through the end of the loop and secure. Make certain that the clip in the strainer is up and the strainer is on the stock side of the fence. Drive staples around the cables in order to secure them. Now mark your locations for your Super W insulators. Install the insulators by driving the screws into the necessary holes. Line posts should be spaced 20 to 30 feet apart. We begin with a payout spinner and a roll of black Equifence. Place the roll on the payout spinner carefully. Tighten the arms inside the payout spinner and tighten the nuts. Take one end of the Equifence and run it to the opposing end of the fence line. Now use the lag bolt insulators on the other end of the fence. First, drill your pilot hole, then screw in the lag bolt. Attach the insulator and tighten the nut. Using a sharp knife or pair of electrical wire strippers, score the fence material just enough to loosen it. 
but not nick or cut the galvanized wire underneath. The segment should be 12 to 14 inches long. Squeeze with your Gallagher fence pliers. Then grasp the outer sheath material with a pair of Gallagher pliers. Step on the wire with your foot and secure it. Rotate the material around the galvanized wire and pull it off. Thread the stripped end of the wire around the insulator twice. Allow a gap of exposed galvanized wire about three to four inches long to exist between the end of the equifence. This space will allow for electrical connections to be made. Maintain the relative positions of the wire and insulator while at the same time keeping tension on both items. Make a handle, wrap the wire five times, and then break. Now walk back to the other end of the fence line, securing the equifence in the insulators as you go. Once you have secured the equifence in the insulators, you will need to attach the equifence to the termination kit assembly that you have already installed. Pull on the fence to remove the excess slack. At the back of the strainer, measure to cut the wire, then cut the wire. Pull the wire to the strainer once more to measure how much sheath to remove. As previously done, strip the equifence sheath material from the galvanized wire. First, raise the clip on the strainer up. Then push the exposed wire through the hole in the strainer. Bend the wire at a right angle and drop the clip. Take Gallagher fence pliers and cut it so that the wire does not catch on the spring. Using a strainer handle spring ratchet, tighten the equifence until all visible slack is removed. Now run another strand of wire to the other end of the fence line. Repeat these steps for the other three wires. In order to connect power to your Equifence system, please refer to the Installing the Energizer section of this video. This is what the finished connection should look like. Be careful when running wire. When loose, always secure sharp wire ends in the ground to avoid injury. And wear safe work gloves and goggles. Also, just to let you know, in addition to the electric black shown here, Equifence is also available in electric white, non-electric black, and non-electric white. In order to join two separate pieces of Equifence, use an Equifence wire joiner. Strip back an inch and a half on both sides. Then take your joiner, insert wire into one end, and repeat this step on the other side. Finally, you'll always want to keep weeds and grass off of your electric Equifence. Weeds and grass can ground out your wire, effectively lowering the charge and occasionally check the tension. This effectively concludes the Equifence portion of this video. In the next section we will be detailing the process of installing an Equibraid fence. In this section we will detail the how-tos of constructing a Gallagher Equibraid fence. We begin with the completed H-brace. If you need help with understanding how to construct an H-brace, consult the section of this video entitled Basics of Fence Construction. If necessary, 9 gauge low tensile wire can be substituted for 12 and a half gauge high tensile. We will first show you how to install Equibraid using Polytube. Mark the post for your Polytube. Drive staples horizontally above and below where the tube will be placed so that the tube does not get compromised. Now use a 23 inch section of Polytube and not insole tube because insole tube is intended for high tensile wire. Next, place the polytube between the two staples with equal amounts of tube showing on either side of your post. Tap the staples down to hold the polytube on. Run the Equibraid through the tube and tie it in a knot. Loosen two L-shaped joint clamps. Then place them over both pieces of Equibraid and behind the knot that you just tied. Attach all strands of Equibraid to the end posts in this manner. Install the Super W insulators as we have seen demonstrated in the previous section. You can use a scribe stick or marking post. This makes it easier to get the insulators in the correct position. As with Equifence, your line posts should be spaced 20 to 30 feet apart. If you're coming to a corner where you do not need to stop, use corner lag insulators which allow you to pull through to the other H-brace assembly without breaking the fence. Just mark your post, drill your hole, and screw in your lag bolt. Attach the insulator with a nut. 
Repeat this process with the other two corner lag insulators. As you can see, we have installed insulatube tube at this end as well. Roll out your wire from one end to the other. At the opposing end, wrap electrical tape around the equibraid to prevent fraying and cut. Repeat the same process as before to secure your equibraid. Walk back through and secure the equibraid in your insulators. Make sure that your equibraid is far enough away from the twitch wire to prevent a short. If necessary, add a staple as shown to offset the wire, taking care not to kink the tubing. Place the groove in a rapid wire tightener over the first strand of the equibraid. Insert the square end of the tightening handle into the square socket of the tightener. Now rotate the tightener handle sufficiently to remove the slack in the equibraid. Place the tightener clip into the two opposing holes on the tightener and remove the handle. Repeat this process for all strands, staggering the location of the tighteners at a 45 degree slant in relation to each other. Now utilize the heavy duty underground cable to make the required connections between all fence strands. Bring insulated wire back to the post and over to the next wire to avoid a foot trap. Again, as with an equifence setup, you'll want to keep weeds and grass off of your equibraid to prevent grounding and maintain the highest possible charge. And regularly check tension. This effectively concludes the equibraid portion of our video. In the next section, we will be detailing the process of installing one and a half inch tape. In this section, we will be detailing the process of installing a one and a half inch tape system. What you see here is a five to six inch wide post at the end of an H brace. You do not necessarily have to use an H brace. In this case, we are because we are hanging a gate later. This post will form the end of your one and a half inch tape system. You'll want to keep your fence line post spacing between 20 and 25 feet apart. Mark the insulator locations at two, three, and four feet from the ground. Assemble the insulator. Take the base and insert both stainless steel bolts on the back side of the insulator. Make sure that the head of the bolt seats flush. Take the top of the insulator and insert the rubber pad. When you go to attach the insulator, take the plate, the wing nuts, and the keeper with you. Now, using the screws, install a one and a half inch corner insulator at the end post at each mark. This is the super poly tape insulator which we will be using on all line posts and brace posts. First, take the base of the insulator and insert the top, making certain that it clicks and locks. Attach the rubber pads to the base and top of the insulator. Install on your post. Back to the end post. Once you've unscrewed the outer half of the end post insulator, fold the end of the tape over, leaving three to four inches of tape. Place through the bottom slot of the plate without the three holes. Then roll the tape over, inserting in the slot nearest the three holes. Insert the keeper pin into the keeper hole, then pull back and secure the tape. When correctly installed, the plate should not be able to move. Place the metal connecting plate in the insulator and reattach the outer plastic half, finishing by installing the stainless steel wing nuts snugly. Unroll the tape to the other end. Once this is complete, pull tension on the tape to make it tight. Then lock the insulator in place with a hammer. Apply tension on the opposing end post, fastening the tape with the same method as before. Repeat this process for each insulator on the post. In order to connect power to your one and a half inch tape system, please refer to the installing the energizer section of this video. The end product should look like this. As always, keep weeds and grass off of the fence to prevent grounding and regularly check tension. This effectively concludes our Gallagher tutorial on installing equine fencing product. We here at Gallagher hope you found this video helpful, educational, and informative, and that you'll continue to enjoy our high-quality line of Gallagher fencing products for years to come.